If you look at Earth from space, you'll see a blue planet. Almost 70% of its surface is covered with water. But if you gathered all the water into a sphere, it would be just barely big enough to cover Texas. Wow, what a big water balloon that would make! Scientists are almost certain that our planet once had two moons. At some point, long ago, one of them crashed into the other moon, which is now Earth's only natural satellite. Until recently, there was one more object orbiting our planet. It was a temporary mini-moon called 2020 CD3. This tiny space rock was pulled into our orbit more than a year ago. Astronomers believe the mini-moon left Earth's orbit in March. See ya! In July, when we're further from the Sun, the world is warmer overall than in January when we're closer to it. This is because, with Earth's tilt of its axis, there's more dry land in the northern half of the planet than the southern half, and land tends to heat up more than water. During the northern summer in July, more land is heated up than January, so the planet gets a little warmer at this time, even though we're further from our source of heat. Hmm, what's on the menu? Astronauts tasted the first food grown and harvested in space in 2015. It was red romaine lettuce that had been growing in a special chamber for 15 months. Salad days in space. Mount Everest might be getting all of the attention, but Mauna Kea in Hawaii is technically the tallest mountain in the world. Measuring from base to summit, the only thing holding Mauna Kea back from the title is that it's mostly underwater. The Earth has three main layers, two parts of the core, the dense, hot inner core, and the molten outer core. Then comes the mantle, and then follows the thin crust, the surface that supports life as we know it. At least that's what we thought, because now scientists have found a new, mysterious layer located deep within the solid inner core. Earth's inner core is approximately two-thirds the size of the Moon and made of nickel and solid iron. It's burning hot. The temperature at the center of our planet is the same as at the surface of the sun. Now, any place that gets very little water each year is considered a desert. And because Antarctica is roughly as big as the US and Mexico combined, it actually wins the title of the largest desert in the world. Now, one scientist has a theory that a substance existed in ancient microbes before chlorophyll evolved on Earth. That's the stuff that makes plants green. This earlier substance reflected sunlight as red and violet colors, which combined to make purple. Now if true, the young Earth may have been teeming with strange purple-colored critters before all the green stuff appeared. The rocks, metals, and other minerals and things that make up the planet are packed into the ground more tightly in certain places than in others. This has surprising consequences. Gravity varies slightly, depending on where you are. You weigh 0.5% less standing at the equator than you do at the poles. How high up you are also has an effect. So if you were at the top of Mount Everest, you'd also weigh slightly less. Hey, don't look down. The Hudson Bay of Canada is a gravitational anomaly. This area has lower gravity than any other place on Earth. Water bears, also known as moss piglets, are cute little creatures with eight legs and squashed up heads. Despite their microscopic stature, they can basically survive anywhere. They prefer bits of wet moss or the bottom of a lake, but they won't complain if you put them somewhere really uncomfortable. They can endure extreme cold and incredible heat and survive both huge pressure and high radiation. Some of the little bears once even managed to survive unprotected in outer space for 10 days without a problem. Ooh, that is tough. They handled all these things by rolling up into a ball and hibernating, which reduces their need for oxygen and food. Now, there's no solid land under the North Pole. All you can see there is sea ice. Oh, by the way, the gravitational pull is stronger at the poles, and if you travel there, you'll weigh a bit more, besides all the heavy warm clothes you're wearing. 99% of gold ended up in the center of the planet several billion years ago, attracted by the iron in Earth's core. That's enough to coat the entire planet's surface of the stuff. And if all those meteorites hadn't later smashed into the ground, bringing extra amounts of gold, it would be even more rare. If two pieces of the same kind of metal touch in space, they bond and get stuck together. It doesn't happen on Earth because water and air keeps pieces apart. Now, it turns out we live inside the sun. Well, sort of. Its atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface. And even though Earth is far away from the star, 
it's still within the reach of the Sun's atmosphere. Auroras happen when charged particles from the Sun get caught by Earth's magnetic field and crash into the upper atmosphere near the poles. Earth's southernmost continent, Antarctica, is only the fifth largest one, but it contains almost 70% of the planet's fresh water and 90% of the world's ice. Our planet has its magnetic field thanks to scorching hot liquid metal that's flowing inside its outer core. This creates electric currents, and they, in turn, generate the magnetic field. Earth is the densest planet in the solar system, but this density varies depending on where you're looking. For example, the crust is less dense than the solid metallic core. You're walking, running, jumping, but when you stop, it always feels like you're standing still. Well, in reality, you're moving even when you're perfectly still, because Earth is always on the move. Not only does it spin on its axis at 733 miles per hour, depending on where exactly you're standing, but it is also orbiting the Sun at a speed of 66,600 miles per hour, completing the trip in 365 days or so. The Earth is a planet that recycles all the time. The ground we're walking on is recycled. Our planet's rock cycle turns rocks of one type into another. The depths of our planet are filled with magma. As magma is going out on the surface, it hardens into rock. Tectonic processes like volcanic activity, earthquakes, mountain building, and all the other processes bring that rock to the Earth's surface. Their erosion shapes it and shaves little bits off. Those small particles then get deposited. All the pressure coming from above compacts the particles into sedimentary rocks, like, for example, sandstone. The biosphere under the seafloor is growing extremely slowly compared to life on the surface. Cell division happens every 10 to 1,000 years. Something's different about the Earth's axis. Climate changes and melting glaciers, mostly in the regions like the Himalayas and Alaska, made the axis shift. Our planet has two kinds of poles. The first are the south and north magnetic poles. They affect things like drift and navigation. The axis that the Earth is spinning around is another kind of pole. It shifted a little bit over time, but we don't know exactly why. No matter how large an earthquake is, no human could ever feel an earthquake on the opposite side of the Earth, although some people claim they did. The Earth absorbs heat from the Sun, mostly on the surface. The heat doesn't spread equally on all parts of the Earth. One side of the planet, the Pacific Hemisphere, is losing heat more quickly than the other, the African Hemisphere. This happens because land traps more heat than the surface under the ocean. The seafloor is way thinner than the landmass. Also, the temperature caused by the heat coming from inside the Earth is getting lower because of huge amounts of cold water above it. If you could take all the water droplets in clouds and bring them to the surface, you could cover the planet with a liquid layer as thin as a human hair. It doesn't seem like a lot, but this water is crucially important for climate. We'd have warmer temperatures if it weren't for the clouds. And every two to 300,000 years, our planet goes through a magnetic pole reversal. It's not an instant process, though. It can last hundreds or even thousands of years. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.